Friends, good evening and welcome to our second night in Holy Week, the second gathering around the campfire as we join together as a part of our, our Lenten towards Easter journey. Uh, I invite you and remind you that we are following on the liturgies which have been distributed electronically uh, and also that we, as we gather together we light a candle reminding us of Christ's presence. And so we do that now. We remember as we light the candle that Christ is the light of the world and the darkness has never put it out. And so, friends, in the name of God, who created the universe, in the name of Jesus, who redeemed the world, in the name of the Holy Spirit, who draws us into fellowship with the Godhead, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, we gather together to give God praise. Amen. The goodness of God leads to repentance. We, your people, O Lord, come to worship you, for Jesus came freely and in love to give his life as a sacrifice for us. O God, your power was perfectly displayed, for Christ prayed that we who took his life might be forgiven. You, Lord Christ, whom man despises and the nations abhor, you are the Redeemer of Israel, the Holy One, chosen by God, and so we shall worship you. And so we confess as we pray together. O Lord, we confess that our hearts are not always filled with praise, nor are our hearts filled with truth, nor our lives filled with holiness. Forgive us and wash us clean, so that the light of your grace and goodness may shine in and through us, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Then the Gentiles said, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Come and follow me, for where I am, there will my servant be. You are clean. Amen. And so, friends, we continue as we listen to Celia Fleming as she shares with us some of her story this evening. Well, greetings, folks. I'm looking forward to sharing my story with you now of how I came to faith in Christ. My testimony is not particularly dramatic. I didn't have a road to Damascus experience. And the reason for that is that I grew up in a Christian home. The church that we belonged to as a family was the Salvation Army in Johannesburg, the city I grew up in. And we were very committed to church members. Sundays were for going to church. There was never any other activity that would be considered on a Sunday. Sundays were church days and there were other activities during the week, church related, that our family was involved in. And I enjoyed church. I enjoyed going to Sunday school. I enjoyed seeing my friends there. It was quite a social experience. I enjoyed the Bible stories that we were taught. I enjoyed so much of the input and the experience of church. But it was only really when I was about nine or 10, I can't remember the exact age, I went on a youth group camp over a weekend organized by our church. And it was there that something shifted for me. Something changed for me when I realized I could have a personal relationship with God. I cannot remember what material was covered that weekend, what the Bible studies were about, what talks were presented. I cannot remember anything specific, but something changed for me. And it was then that I realized over that weekend that the things we'd been taught at Sunday school were actually real, that they weren't just stories. The penny dropped for me that the crucifixion of Christ and his resurrection were real things that really happened, real events, and that they were for me. They were for the world, but they were for me personally as well. And to get to that point of realizing that you can have a personal direct relationship with God is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I do remember this feeling of almost disbelief coming over me that I could have a friend 
in Jesus and I could have a relationship with God, a direct relationship. And so that was the weekend that I accepted Christ into my life. I accepted him as my savior. Things fell into place. Things made sense. And I shifted from what I can experience, what I can articulate now as a corporate experience of God through church and through family. I shifted from that to a personal experience of God. So I could walk and talk with God during the week and learn about him during the week without waiting for Sunday school on a Sunday to learn more about him. And obviously the corporate experience continued. That's an important part of our faith to share corporately on a Sunday. And, but from then on, it became even more wonderful to me to have this personal relationship with God and then to be able to, to experience that corporately on a Sunday. It had so much more meaning by then. And having made that commitment as a youngster meant that the years that followed as I moved into my teen years and was presented with various challenges at high school, I remember days where I was perhaps filled with a bit of dread for the day ahead at school. And I remember feeling the presence of God with me. I remember having an enormous sense of comfort knowing that I had this personal savior who could walk alongside me. So the comfort and the peace that I had from having a personal relationship was very profound. And it only grew deeper over the years. You know, once from high school, you move into your young adult years and there are decisions to make and guidance that you need and and job decisions and relationships and so on. Moving through all of that with my creator, the person who created me, who knew me intimately and deeply, who knew how I thought and everything about me, being able to move through all those decisions and challenges with my creator was a phenomenal thing. And it still is. Still, obviously, there are challenges and and decisions and so on to make in life. And I cannot imagine facing any of that without God. So while I said that a bit earlier that this wasn't a road to Damascus conversion, I still think that the moment when you enter into a personal relationship with God, it's hugely transformational. Although one can downplay it and, and say that it wasn't dramatic, there is a massive change that happens at that point. And so as we move towards Easter, which is by far my favorite season on the Christian calendar, the transformational nature of our relationship with God becomes even clearer to me because of the crucifixion and because of the resurrection. What that means for us personally, each one, is enormous. To be able to connect personally with our Lord Jesus Christ is fantastic. And so as you also move towards Easter, I pray that you too will be reminded of how much transformation has taken place in your life simply because you know God personally. Be well, stay safe, God bless. And so as we continue in our service, uh, we say together the prayers of intercession again following on our liturgies. And so let us pray. For all those whose souls are in turmoil, Lord, save them from this hour. For all who are tormented by the difficulties of being shut in, Lord, save them from this hour. For all who bear the inner scars of rape, abuse, violence, neglect, loneliness and rejection, and who suffer the same in lockdown, Lord, save them from this hour. For all who face divorce and family breakdown, Lord, save them from this hour. For all who, in the face of temptations to suicide or enslaved to substances and addictive behavior, Lord, save them from this hour. 
and for works of compassion, care, justice, support, reconciliation, Lord, send us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so once again, as we close off, we do so singing uh, our theme hymn for this week, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. So we close as we say the benediction together again I encourage you to take hands with those who are close to you and to share the words with them and so now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.